Hello and welcome to Jill Cameron Creations. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to mask for a one layer card. It is time consuming and it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but it is so worth it for the final results. I really, really enjoy doing one layer cards, even if I have to mask a whole bunch of stuff. So what I wanted to include in this video is also a little bit about how the design comes about. Uh, sometimes I sketch it, sometimes I use the masks, sometimes I use the stamps like I'm doing here. And one thing that I'll do is I'll come up with a layout that I really like and then I'll sketch it out. But then I actually make it into a legitimate sketch because that looks like I'm trying to draw a dude with the big ears. So I'll turn that into a legitimate sketch and put it in uh, a digital format that I can scroll through. Uh, as well. I'm thinking about doing a card sketch um, like challenge or something here in the next little while, a couple months or so, and just thinking about it, I haven't decided if, if I would, if I'm going to do that or not, and if that's something that y'all would be interested in, let me know in the comments below. That would definitely help me make my decision. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm figuring out that I'm going to have a little grouping of critters. Uh, on a hill and they're kind of looking back on this little village and I decided I just wanted to have the sentiment of love since my little critters are going to be all squished up there and I'm going to put snowflakes in here and I'm going to ink blend the entire background and do some Copic coloring on it as well because usually that's what you do when you do have a one layer card you're you're looking at doing some Copic coloring and some ink blending so I'm going to ink blend the background and I have the idea in my head and yes that sketch will actually help me remember what I'm what I'm doing so the first thing that we need to do is figure out what image is going to be foremost and that's going to be the the three little critters together I'm using Avery removable labels they are the bang for your buck is really good on these, but I find that I can't really necessarily reuse them because they tear pretty easy. It's not that they, they ink up and, and absorb the ink too much. It's just very simply they tear really easily. But what I'm doing is I'm stamping all of the images that I'm going to use and then I'm going to fussy cut them out. When you fussy cut images for masks, cut more towards the inside of the line than the outside of the line. That way you don't have a white gap in between the uh, masked off image and the image that you're actually stamping. So the, cut the two little raccoons or foxes or whatever they may be are all cuddled up right there together. That's going to be my foremost image in my my scene and I did stamp an additional house that I ended up not using I'm going to save you the pain of watching me fussy cut all that stuff and we're gonna get right to it so I fussy cut everything out a misty does help with us so 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 much I can freehand it but I definitely get better results um, when I use my my stamping tool um, you'll see me move the stamps up there onto that scrap piece of paper that's in the top left, top right. I'm just making sure that I don't have any ink on my stamp, putting it on my fresh white paper. So we're going to stamp out all of these elements, my, my critters, and the houses, and everything. So you stamp your foremost image first. And I'm stamping them twice and I'm using Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink that's safe, Copic Safe. Uh, the other thing about the Avery labels, and it reminded me when I see my hand go off camera here, uh, just like with anything else that's really thin and has a backing on it, it's a little fussy sometimes to get the backing off of it, but it's not terrible. Then I go ahead and I'm going to stamp on the right side and then I'm going to stamp the same exact image on the left side of the cuddled up couple here. I've put my, my mask down so that inside part of that little fox is going to be um, not stamped because we have that mask there. And I'm putting this mask on because I'm going to do some ink blending in a little bit. So this isn't like... I'm going to stamp over top of that little raccoon either, but 
I'm doing it so that I can ink blend something in a little bit. So I have my little critter there and I'm stamping that one that's on the left. And then I'm gonna put the mask over that one as well. And then I'm gonna stamp my houses at the very top where I want them. Um, peeling off masks, sometimes you get ink on your fingernail and then you scratch the surface of, of the panel itself um, to and it transfers the color from your fingernail and you just want to scream really loud when that happens. So to prevent that from happening, use a uh, craft knife to just pick the corner of it up or just the very, very, very edge of that the mask up and peel it up. So I have, if you notice, as I have my images stamped here, they're in a triangle. And visually, when you're doing a one layer card, you wanna do things in threes. And there's that thing called a visual triangle. And it it's more natural to the eye. And you're, you, when you have things in threes, it automatically forms a triangle there. And I have my, my largest one is my, my grouping of critters towards the front. And I have that little house that's over there on the, the, the left, which I'm going to add my sentiment above that. That's why that one's kind of so small. And I did wipe the very edge of this stamp right here where the hill kind of goes down on the houses. One side of it went down too far for me. So I just wiped the ink off of it and didn't stamp that part. Easy. Now, what we're going to take a look at is... Um, I'm going to go ahead and ink blend my background and what we're seeing here is me trying to figure out whether or not I want to add that other house. I'm sorry, I'm kind of back and forth all over the place. I want to figure out if I wanted to add that house. That's the one thing that masks are really good for, figuring out if you really want to do that or not. Now we're going to get into the ink blending and I used Distress inks, just, yeah, just regular Distress inks and I have mostly mini cubes that I use. And the colors that I used for the Distress Ink is Tumbled Glass, Salty Ocean, Blueprint Sketch, that's for the sky, and then I used Shaded Lilac for my hillsides. So for my hillsides, I just literally cut several hillsides down out of the Avery paper. And I just cut some thin strips and then took my scissors and I kind of got where I wanted them to be on the where my critters were setting and that kind of thing and just kind of got them all there. Then added my mask. And I, when I was getting ready to stick this down, I realized um, that's actually gonna stick to my mat there. So I probably wanna put this where I can reach it. So did that so I didn't have to pick it back up again. And I'm going to start working on the sky down is how I'm going to come from the top down and work. And I literally did the same thing again and again and for, for my, my hills. I just wanted to make sure that I had sloping hills that didn't do any weird things behind my, um, behind my critters or in front of my critters and having just a gently sloping hill on be the next one up worked the best instead of the hill disappearing behind them the other thing you'll see that i know i marked where the bottom of my card was so that i knew that it went all the way down and i'm doing that again here and i'm kind of following the line to begin with uh at for under the house, the line that's already there. That gives me a really good guide to where my house needs to, my, the, the hill needs to be there. And I'm just trimming that out with scissors and it doesn't matter if it's perfect, it's a hill. And we're gonna just ink blend, it'll be okay. So peel that off and ta-da, now we have hills. And the rest of the card is perfectly fine. And the reason that I did this from the bottom up is so that I could just peel one layer off at a time and I didn't have to reposition anything and um, be concerned about getting inky fingers on the card panel there. And 
the first layer of ink that I'm gonna do is tumble glass there's two different ways I wanted to show this in the, in the video uh, there's two different ways that you can ink up a sponge for doing uh, ink blending and one is to smush it on your mat and pick up and the other one is just to go straight to the ink pad I like going straight to the ink pad a whole lot better than um, putting it on my mat I, I just do I like it a lot better so the tumbled glass went all over everything and then I'm putting the blueprint sketch at the very top and salty ocean is going to kind of go in the middle there. And I just ink blended this right on along and put that dark at the very very top. And I'm going to play some music while I finish doing the ink blending here and talk to you in a minute. I'm sorry um, we're still about 13 minutes in and the magic of lifting off those masks is here oh I love this I love this part it's so pretty um, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. I'm always scared that I'm gonna scratch the paper with my craft knife so I'm like super careful with it and then I kind of get more comfortable with it and I'm just like yeah here we go <laughs> done and um, the Avery I will say that the Avery um, label removable labels I haven't been able to use them because they re tear I haven't been able to reuse them because they tear that didn't make any sense okay you know what I mean so now we're gonna get down to some Copic coloring here the colors that I'm using are going to be on the left right there I'm keeping this really really simple because it's so much going on I've already spent a lot of time on the card itself so I'm just keeping this really really simple but keeping kind of the same tones of colors so for my reds I'm my darkest red is an R59 and then a 39 and a 29 and then I'm gonna put teal with that and I'm using BG 02, 05, and 07. Um, I'm going to use W7, W5, and W3 to color in my little critters 
and also some E79, E77, 74, and 71 to color in my critters. And I'm just doing really basic three color blends. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about this because the main focus of this video, of course, was to do the, the masking. So I'm going to kind of speed this up really, really, really fast so you can see the coloring, but the video then isn't extremely long um, because this took me about an hour to create the card and make everything and do all of the, the masking and stuff. So, um, let me speed this up and if you have any questions about Copic coloring before I do that real quick uh, if you have any questions about Copic coloring I have some other videos uh, over on my blog I will link to some other Copic color videos that are one layer cards as well and um, also you can shoot me an email and I'll be happy to explain a process or make a video so that everybody can see it too because if you have the question probably somebody else has the question so I'm going to speed the rest of this up and you can watch the Copic coloring. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and like me over here on YouTube as well as find me over on my blog at jillcameroncreations.com. Links to the products will be down below in the description and we'll talk to you next time.